So just an interesting fun fact before the match. But, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're ready to get Michigan back into dual season here. Yeah? Yeah, Absol Kevin? Absolutely, man. And uh, it's going to be fun. I mean, 125 for the Wolverines is one of those weight classes that, you know, we're, we're probably going to see throughout the season change hands as far as who the, the starter is. But, uh, you know, that's a good thing to have. If the cream rises to the top when there's competition in the room. Yeah, yeah, we were, you know, talking a little bit about it um, before the match of kind of a, a great year to see some guys, you know, step up and rise to the occasion as Michigan is kind of getting, you know, uh, this, this reformed era of uh, some new guys getting to step up. Some of their kind of um, tried and true seniors graduating, moving on. Um, and so, you know, we have do have a couple grad transfers, but really a young team and nice shot there by Christian Tanafew. Good job getting through his progressions to finish that shot. And right there on the edge. Great takedown. Keeps him in And bounds. he's going straight for a turn. You love to see the transition there. He's going to have to be and careful not to get paid. <laughs> he might get the fall here off this tilt. He'll settle for, for four back points. <laughs> there we go. So some action right off the bat, a seven-point move basically from Christian Tanafew after the three-point takedown, four points near fall. You like to see him committing to a ride like that too. I mean, we were talking before we got uh, got started here um, how much more incentivized you know people are to, to get turns with the, the extra near fall points. Uh, you could see he really, really attacked it right away. Yeah, I love, I love the three-point takedown. I love the four-point near fall. I think – Rewarding the offensive wrestler is is always the, the right move. Um, you, you know, especially from a fan's perspective, you're going to see guys going for more turns, trying to get more takedowns when you know that, you know, you can really open up a match in those ways. One point escape there. Nice, nice job getting up to his feet is Ba. Well, and you know as well as anybody else, right? It's it's the the level of like mistakes that you can have. You know, to give up uh, a takedown off your own shot, like nobody wants to do that. So you almost have to have that extra level of incentivization to, you know, take more attacks and take more chances. So, yeah, yeah, and I think, and it looks like Tanafew is, <laughs> he's all for it because he, he's been, you know, on and off the legs of of Ba two or three times now within this first first two minutes, and um, you know, it's really good to see from Christian. I know he's he's kind of gotten a few opportunities. Uh, to break the Michigan lineup, but it looks like tonight he's he's coming out here and he, he's really trying to put on a dominant performance and make a say for him being the guy at 125. So I think it, it, it makes it you know you love to have decisions as a, as a coaching staff. That's what that's what makes programs great. Absolutely. A nice attack, and a nice ball, getting to both legs. Climbing up. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, what a nice step over from Tanafew. Get that takedown. Bob was in deep. He was just not able to secure the takedown. And, but, hey, that's what we're talking about. He was incentivized to, to get that attack off and just wasn't and able right to Right back it. to the tilt here. <laughs> He's trying to put this match yeah. away in the first period here. It's at first you don't succeed. Try, try again. And two. Oh. Four, four near fall for Tanafy there. Was it three? Uh, regardless of the, the, what that was, it's 13 to 1 <laughs> for the first. A lot of points being put up in this first period. That's, yes. that's the message. Well, and if you're Tanafy, you, you know, this is kind of the message you want to be sending to your coaching staff too, is that uh, I'm out here to score points. I'm out here to, to get you know, not just points in the match, but for the team. Yeah, you, you see the – I love the progression. I, I want to get back to that, I feel like, because it's it's not used enough in college. I think that when you're, when, you're, when you're getting a takedown or when you're working to get a takedown, a lot of times you're just thinking about those three points. But, you know, some of the, the best guys in the country and world, they're always thinking progression, transition. So, you know, Christian, to be able to, to get to that takedown and then imme immediately secure the wrist and get to that tilt, I mean, that's, that's high-level wrestling. And you, you always want to preach high-level wrestling. So – Nice re-attack, nice re-attack. Tries the trip to bring him down to the mat. Can't quite do it, they're on the edge. I think 
both wrestlers kind of waiting on a stalemate there. But yeah, good scramble there. Kind of a, a similar position that Tanifu found himself in just a minute ago, where it beat dead to rights and then, you know, defends the takedown. So, 125 guys, just, they're they came out ready to wrestle. A lot of speed. A lot of speed. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, Christian getting in a sprinter stance right there. <laughs> Looking like he, he was ready to change levels almost off the, off the block. To get back to what you were saying about the, the progressions and, and going from one thing to the next, one of the things I like too, um, Tan, if you show him that he, he's got a game plan. You know, he went to that tilt both times he was on top, got points both times. And a nice Bob. shot by Suleiman. Let's see and if he can finish it this time. He does. So this time, a little bit smarter on the finish. And those three point takedowns, you know, Christian's got to keep wrestling here. Um, he, it's crazy how you can go from being in a position where you're looking for a tech fall to, you know, almost him clearing the major, you know, in just one takedown because of that three point takedown. So, like I said, you know, it, it, it almost, it also keeps things interesting in a match, I think is, is another benefit of, of these high scoring moves and kind of the, these scoring adjustments. 100%. Well, and, you know, a takedown at the end of the period. Uh, for Ba, which is, is certainly helpful because it doesn't allow Tanifu to get the, the escape point, but it also eliminated riding time. Yeah. And Ba wants to get right back after it. Tanifu chose bottom. Ba puts him back on his feet, gives him the escape. He's trying to go get this himself. Yeah. If if you're if you're Ba, you're you're thinking every second matters right here, right? I mean, I, I don't want to be standing around. I, I'm trying to get get to my set and go right away. And if you're Christian Ooh, Tanifu, good action. I good think that action. the biggest thing you got to realize is you can't stop wrestling. So you almost have to be thinking offense because as soon as your mind switches to defense, I think you put yourself in a vulnerable position. And a great job right there <laughs> by Tanifu to, to transition some defense <laughs> into offense. Right, that was, that was very impressive. We've seen him twice now in this match just take what was a really, really good attack from Bod and just flip it on him. Yeah, and, and you know, I've I've been in the room with with Wilfred and Christian, his his twin brother, and I I have to give them a shout out to say that I don't think I've ever seen two guys that are that athletic. Um, you know, they, they can <laughs> they can do just about any sort of flip that you you can ask for, um, and their speed and strength is just unmatched. So it's really showing in this match. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to see that it's kind of translating to some wrestling. Oh, very much so. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of times you get guys that are very athletic, but just because you're an athlete, wrestling can, <laughs> it doesn't mean you're wrestling athletic, right? Exactly. Well, great job to stay in bounds. Yeah, great job stays to keep in the speed cylinder. In. Yeah, if, if you're Tanifu at this point, it's let that time keep clicking. Yeah, great mat awareness by Tanifu there. And I, and I do like, you know, I, I, I will give Suleiman credit. He's not... He's not just, you know, calling it quits yet. He's continuing to wrestle, which you got you to gotta respect that. Well, and if you're Tanifu at this point, too, well, you don't want to give up that takedown there. I was about to say, he, he's still, you know, in range for a tech fall at that point. But at this point, you pretty well have the, uh, the major secured. Yeah, as long as he doesn't, as long as he doesn't continue to give up points. And there it is. We got a 18 to 9 victory for Christian Tanifu. A high scoring, high flying match to start off our duel tonight. Did not disappoint. What do you think, Kevin? No, I'm excited. And again, you know, if, if you're Tanifu, you're, you've got to be pretty pumped to, to get your opportunity in the lineup here. And again, show the coaching staff that you're out there to score points. You're, you're not giving up easy takedowns. You're, you're fighting through every single position. So. Uh, a big message uh, to them, you know, in his opportunity here. Yeah, and for for Michigan wrestling fans, I think you're going to know this name coming up. Um, returning All-American Dylan Ragason, kind of the the staple of the team coming in. Um, Dylan is always known to put on fireworks, so this should be an exciting match against Boris Whitmer.
who's a senior from Columbia. Yeah, Ragazin ranked fourth in the country um, at this point in the season. Uh, like you mentioned, coming off an All-American finish last year in Kansas City. And, uh, and I talked to him a little bit at the, the MSU Open and just talking about you know the confidence that, that being on that podium kind of instills in him and, and coming into this season. And he's excited. He's excited to let it fly. He's, he's ever since uh, he put on the maize and blue, always been somebody that... Uh, brings fireworks with him when he gets on the mat. Yeah, yeah, Dylan is, he he really is one of the, the hardest working guys in the room. I've seen him, you know, year after year, just, you know, put in, put in the work and do all the right things. And so to see him, you know, finally get to that fifth place finish last year at the NCAA tournament was, you know, it was a long time coming. And I think that that finish hopefully will propel him to want to go win a national title. I think last year even he was, very well, you know, setting the goal of becoming a national champ, but to get on that podium and just get the stress of becoming an All-American out of the way, I think Dylan's going to be really exciting to watch this year. Just, you know, a lot of pressure off of him and really able to, to try to elevate and go for it all. Oh, 100%. You know, when you talk a little bit about pressure, he started the year redshirting last year and was undefeated um, until he got uh, pulled out of his redshirt. And uh, I'm sure that kind of left some of the, the pressure off, too. Ragason from Elk Grove Village, Illinois. Yep, he is he is a a staple of not only the Michigan wrestling program but also the the Izzy style wrestling program out in Illinois. 100%. Um, you know we have a quite the pipeline here, and great takedown from Ragason, but quite the pipeline of Izzy guys here at Michigan. And um, you know between Will Dewan and, and Dylan Ragason of this era, they they are two of the you know quintessential. Izzy guys, I would say, and um, you'll you'll usually see, you know, that for those of you who don't know, Izzy is is one of the uh, you know great coaches of high school wrestling and produces some champions. So it, it's great to see you know him him at these dual meets, but also you know producing guys that um, we get to, to root on in the Maize and Blue. One hundred percent. Back to our feet here is uh, Whitmer gets a, an escape, and I liked how Dylan fin I liked how Dylan finished that. You know, he that takedown right there. He he does a really good job of of securing takedowns quickly and, and not allowing a lot of room for scrambling. And I think that yeah, once again, down on those legs. <laughs> and, and as I say that <laughs> that that kind of low double shot, you know, head in the knee. It just I think it's becoming a really popular shot in college wrestling because um, you just don't see as much defense for it. You know, if you can get your head and run the corner the right way um, and get that shot off clean, it's it's an easy finish and you know it doesn't burn a lot of energy. It doesn't burn a lot of clock and so. Well, and guys are so good at scrambling now. I mean, you see guys all the time doing kind of roll throughs and try and grab other legs and, and you know work for a stalemate even in some circumstances, but uh, yeah, that shot really eliminates a lot of those extra scrambles. One thing about Ragason too that's, that's really impressive is he's got such a, an arsenal. Uh, he, can, he can go upper body, he can you know attack low to the ankles. He he's got your more traditional you know underhook you know to uh, to a single leg. Um, how much does that help you know just being that dangerous in so many different positions? Oh, I think it's. It, it's, it's almost a requirement of being, you know, a, a high-level oh, wow. wrestler. And, and nice reversal there from Whitmer. That was impressive. Yeah, Ragason got a little little out of position on top there and ended up giving up the reversal. Yeah, right, right at the buzzer, too. So if you're Whitmer, you got to be happy about that, that ending, uh, end of the first period finish. Um, but a little bit back to what I was saying, I think wrestling has become so dynamic that you really can't be a one-trick pony at this point, at this level, um, especially if you're you're looking to be an All-American or a national champion. Um, you have to have, you know, multiple different tools in your arsenal to be able to go out there. And you know, if, if you're a great single leg, if you have a great single leg, you might have to develop a low single or a high crotch, right? Or or even become a great hand fighter to to kind of be able to mask the great high crotch. Speaking of, right there from Ragason. Well, you were talking about great hand fighting. That's kind of how we got in there. He just got physical, went in, and was able to get that, that attack off. But again, he's, he's finishing these shots quickly. 
Yeah, I, I always love to say, you know, when whenever I am working with high school or, or the youth wrestlers that it's really important to spend time on the way you're making contact and your hand fighting tactics because in high school, a lot of the times, if, if you get to a certain level where you know you're going to wrestle in college, a lot of the guys you wrestle, you might just be able to, to go out there and take a shot and take the guy down. But once you get to college, you realize hand fighting becomes a, a much bigger part of the battle. And so, you know, that takedown was really just a, a textbook example of, right, he got to a hard collar got to what we call his heavy set. He knows that's where he can get go get one, get to an attack, and just set up becomes basically muscle memory. And uh, that's what it takes at this level, I think. It's, it's really important to, to hammer that in. Looks like Dylan was called for locked hands at some point. Wow. Yeah, Tuck. so we have a close duel. <laughs> we have a close match here, although, yeah. you know, Ragason's kind of been in the driver's seat, nine to six currently. Tough sequences on top for him, giving up that reversal at the end of the period, and then uh, a locked hands and the escape there. But he still has the only takedowns of the match. So despite the, the closeness in the score, he's been uh, pretty well in control. But anything can happen. This is yeah. D1 wrestling. Yeah, I think if, you, if, you're, if you're Whitmer, you're, you're looking to slow this match down and, and really try to, to try to go with get one in the third period. If you're Ragusin, you're thinking, forget about those, those two little mishaps and, and really try to blow this match open going into this third period. Yeah, he's, he's got to be pretty motivated here to go out here and put up a couple, uh, couple takedowns and blow this one wide open. Yeah, and take down and escape and you're, you're back in major position, so. Whitmer putting on a good ride though right now. Yeah, yeah. The first the first move, you know, Dylan was did a good job with his first move, but there was just a, a nice counter there by Whitmer. He's kind of riding that near wrist. Um, a great position, like I said, if you want to eat up clock and, and slow the match down. Well, and if you're Ragason too, I mean, yeah, you want to get that major, you wanna you know, secure your riding time or keep that intact. And here he goes. Yep. Gets his leg up, back. gets a reversal of his own, keeps his riding time intact, and, and he <laughs> now he can go to work on top if he wants, or cut and go for the major. That's <laughs> exactly what he does. And so now Ra Ragason in a position to to get a, a major decision here, but Whitmer kind of <laughs> in a position that's keeping him in this match. Ooh, nice slide nice by. Slide by. <laughs> and that's what you're talking about, Kevin, when you said his, he's got a deep arsenal. I mean, he can he can shoot every which angle, and then he can also kind of transition to some utter, upper body takedowns, some slick, nasty slide by, and he, he goes for it again right there. And so he chooses to, to go back up to the feet to secure the major. He, he could have secured it with a ride out, but he kind of wanted to, I think, put an emphasis, kind of a, a stamp on it. Yep. 19 seconds left. Let's see if he can get it here. I assume you'd want to go to your number one attack here, but. Yeah, there's the stall call. So that's his first stall call, I think. So Dylan will have to. I pushed him oh, right yeah. out of bounds. There's the second one. So <laughs> Ragason kind of gets he gets the major in a very unique way. Back to back stall calls. Well, and that's one of the emphasis that uh, that they put on the last couple of years. You know, he already backed up to the edge, uh, which which got the first stall call uh, put on him. And then, you know, when you then don't fight harder to get back in the middle. But out here, serious history, Michigan is 4-0 against Columbia. They last met in November 2023, where Michigan won 33-6 the last season. Um, if I remember correctly, I think the, the they couldn't have picked a better guy. You know, Donnie is, is somebody that spent some time at Michigan I got to know. And there's not many coaches like Donnie Fritzhoff. I think he's, he's a, a you know, world-class coach, uh, world-class you know, wrestler as well. And he, he, he made sure to bring on also a world-class staff which is just as important. 
and Sebastian Rivera, who just won an Olympic bronze medal this year at the Paris Olympics. Um, he won a silver medal the year prior, multiple time All-American from Rutgers. Jeff Buxton, who for wrestling fans know he's one of the all-time great high school wrestling coaches at the Blair Academy. And then finally, Greg Molsak, who's a, a Rutgers, um, Clarion and Rutgers uh, native uh, of college wrestling, multiple time All-American, who will be phenomenal for the, the upper weight guys. So, this is, this is a world-class coaching staff. I mean, I think that Columbia is really looking upward with what they have now in store. 100%, you know, and, and one of the things, too, that's interesting with Sebastian Rivera, he was a Northwestern guy as well. Uh, so he's, you know, he's certainly aware of the academic uh, aspects that you have at a place like Columbia um, that, uh, that the athletes have to go through as well. But we're back at it here. We've got Sergio Lemley from Michigan, currently ranked eighth in the country. Uh, against Kai Owen, uh, currently ranked 27th uh, for Columbia. So this should be you know, a good matchup of uh, two guys ranked in the country. Yeah, one of our two ranked matchups um, tonight. And I'm excited for this one. I've, I've got to watch Kai Owen wrestle a little bit, you know, just being a fan of the sport. And he's, he's got some, some, some interesting funk in his style. And if you know Sergio, he's kind of a, a – Sim I want to say the opposite, but, you know, he also has funk, but he's really known for his kind of bull mentality where he just wants to move forward <laughs> and run right through you and just he's not going to stop wrestling until the whistle blows. And so I think that these this, this clash of matchups could be really interesting. Yeah, well, definitely uh, difference in stature between the two. Sergio, stockier. Wow, a little good, good action on that inside reach single. Going to isolate that leg, come up with it. Oh, yeah. doing a good job trying to lock in the crotch or around, around the uh, the leg there, but Sergio is stingy. And Great takedown. He's workmanlike. <laughs> yep, and in that position, that's exactly what you want to be workmanlike. You don't you don't need to do anything, you know, explosive or flashy. Flashy. It's just controlling the position and, and slowing him down and kind of trying to control one limb at a time and then you know waiting for that little window, which he did, and get your takedown. Yep. I always say, uh, coaching kids, you can't skip steps. You know, you got to go step by step through that process to finish that single. Nice job by Owen to uh, clear his hips there and, and get up. Get the escape right back up. Trying to go get a takedown of his own. Yeah, Sergio, one thing is, I, I think we saw it right early on, is Sergio, if he can continue to get to the legs and, and be methodical with his finishes, um, he's, he's a really hard guy to wrestle because he's going to set a pace that, and great shot there as I say that, um, but he's going to set a pace that a lot of guys cannot hang with. But it just is a matter of limiting points early in the match and then trying to tack them on late in the match. I think that, that that's when we've seen him wrestle his best. And so Sergio is going to have to watch out for the neutral danger here. And as he does that, continues to scramble. Looked like he was going to give it up there, but that magically. Was that was close. Got his hips out. Owen doing a really good job still having that ankle and securing it. But and Lemley, Lemley's got him now in uh, neutral danger. So here. Swipes, but no swipes. And in that position, you're looking to get a guy on his back for three seconds or more to secure the takedown in a in kind of a 50-50 position. Wow, this scramble's been going on for about <laughs> 40 seconds. <laughs> Real close. Just in the nick of time, saved by the bell uh, is Kai Owen. Very exciting uh, exchange there. All started from that that low ankle shot from Owen. And both guys looked like they were going to give up takedowns. Uh, you know, a couple different times in that scramble. Yeah, I think they were playing the far ankle game there. I think uh, Lemley, at, at a point in time, he was in a short or uh, a crackdown position, but then was able to kind of find far ankle and look for a, a little bit of a crotch lift and trying to do some back exposure. Um, but th that's a, a really interesting position there is when you're in that neutral danger position. It's almost like you want to make sure you're trying to secure the takedown before you look for neutral danger. Um, because as you can see, sometimes the refs are a little bit slow to call. And uh, Lemley doing a really good job, though, <laughs> securing those legs from the bottom position and, and getting that reversal. 
Yeah, that did not look comfortable for Lemley. You know, when you get a guy <laughs> that tall throwing legs in, um, you sometimes worry. But he did, again, just a great job of, of being patient and finding his little opening, getting the reversal. Back up to our feet. One thing that doesn't always show through uh, when, when watching, you know, wrestling on, on TV or streaming is the physicality of these matches. I mean, these tie-ups, are they're not gentle. But yeah. when you're here in person, it, it's, <laughs> it's intense. It's yeah. loud. Yeah, we, we have the headsets on, and you can still hear some of those, those clubs, you know, banging against the headgear. And you wonder, oh. nice sweep single there from Lemley. Oh, and he did a nice job clearing his leg. He sensed that, uh, that Owen was going to try to dive through there, and he just cleared his leg and secured the takedown. Yeah, Lemley has done a great job of neutralizing the scrambling abilities of Owen in this match. Um, between the, the, the leg in um, and clearing the leg to a reversal, his first shot, you know, kind of finishing really methodically through the middle. And then that shot right there, right? That dive through can put you into a 50-50, if not a kind of disadvantage. And he just shut it down right at the, you know, right at the beginning. Well, and the only time we've been in a scramble, really, in this match was off of uh, Kai Owen's shot, you know? So we talked earlier about Ragason finishing his takedowns quickly and cleanly, and certainly that message has been delivered to Lemley as well. <laughs> I think so. Still two minutes to go, though, third period. Owen starts down. Nice return from Lemley. Shane Sparks has got to like that. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's something that even with the mat return um, that I've seen we emphasize, and I know that the best programs emphasize is the mat return is half the battle, right? Once you get a guy down, you could mat return him five times and he can come back up. But it's kind of like the transition wrestling that I was talking about earlier, um, or you know, flow wrestling, whatever you want to call it, where you want to find a wrist or a tight waist. As soon as you get to that mat return, you're looking to get this guy into a position where you can hold him down, you know, and break him down to his belly. Well, and some of it's that mental game too, you know, just showing somebody that, yep, you can. I'm gonna pick you up. And I'm gonna put you back down. <laughs> yep. Keep trying to get up, but we're just gonna end up right back here. <laughs> And the mental game, speaking of, this is where Lemley thrives, you know, yeah. in these these minute left situations. A lot of guys are looking, you know, at, all right, I have a major secured, but I think Lemley is smelling blood right now, and he, he's looking to get every score he can before that, that final whistle blows. Well, you talked about the pace uh, early in this match that he, that he puts on. That's certainly been shown here. Great job to, to continue the scramble here by Owen, though. Getting close to that neutral danger call. There's, there it is. We got one swipe. Ooh, want to watch that knee. Lumley doing a good job of continuing to fight in this position. They're trying looks to like score here. Yeah, Owen looks like he's kind of looking for the stalemate at this point. Yeah, this oh is no, a he's trying to bring that leg up and out. Shelf it. Ooh, watch the knee. Yep, that's close. Yeah, that's a tough position for, for both guys, especially Lumley, where he it seems like he could just slip his leg out and get the takedown, but it's almost like you got your foot stuck in mud, you know, when a guy's holding it there. Yeah. And a 12-4 major decision for Sergio Lemley. A great, a great job to you know, just a workmanlike match, kind of what we expected, but really neutralized the, the, the dynamic, the scrambling of Owen and just. Oh, absolutely. Well, and you know, we kind of breezed over that last takedown that he had. He got it so quickly, um, but that's really what he needed to, to get that uh, that win there. There you see Sean Bormet, head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. Um, eighth season with Michigan, 75 and 25. Um, was an assistant on the staff with Tim Farland before then. Um, and obviously he coached you. Talk a little bit about uh, Coach Bormet and his impact on the program over the years. Yeah, Sean, Sean is a great mentor to me. 
Um, you know, and still continues to be a great mentor as, you know, I've continued into the senior level of wrestling after Michigan. Um, he's, you know, you see the record 75 and 25. Um, you don't see that with a lot of a lot of coaches, especially in their first few seasons. He came in and made an immediate impact. And I think that Coach McFarland was, you know, um, kind of uh, gave him a great a, a great program to start off with, you know, and he was an assistant coach building the team. But, the, uh, you know, Sean has always been a, a great mentor and, and a big reason why I came to Michigan. So, you know, to, to see him continue to thrive and, and build what he's built at Michigan, it was no surprise. You know, I knew when, when he stepped into my, my kitchen to, to recruit me, there was, there was something special about what he was trying to build. And, um, you know, he's done it with even his staff that he's built between Josh Torella, um, Kevin Jackson, Dave Boyard, um, and then Jack Bentley and, and, and Alex Daringer kind of being a, an extension of, of the coaching staff um, of former wrestlers. So it's, 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 they're building something special at Michigan, and, I, and it's, I've been really excited and happy to be a part of it. Um, and being able to talk about it down here, you know, just, I'm, I'm just as excited and ecstatic, so. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Here we have Zart Walker from Michigan at 149, jumping in here. Usually we have Dylan Gilcher, but uh, he'll be out for this duel. Yep, and, and Zar Walker is the younger brother to Joseph Walker, who we'll be getting to see a little bit later tonight um, at 174 pounds. So if you know Michigan wrestling, you know we're, we, have, we have a decent amount of, of sets of brothers, so. Um, it's exciting to see, you know, a fresh, fresh set of brothers getting to, to, to tagline a duel tonight. And his opponent is Richard Fedelin from uh, Laurel, Maryland, who is a junior and has had some experience. I think he was a, a starter last year and, and got to wrestle some, some in Columbia's lineup. So Czar is kind of the, the fresh guy out there. Well, how nice is it, I mean, you know, to get that experience as a freshman, to jump in there, put on the maize and blue, and, and to compete, you know? I mean, I know you wrestled early in your career, so you know, what is it like jumping in in a, a big duel situation like this? Um, I, th I think it's it's a, you have to look at it like it's an opportunity, right? That's that's the, the best framing you can have is not many guys get to, to get to toe the line, wear the maize and blue. You have 30, 30 guys on the roster and only 10 guys get to usually compete. So um, I, when, I, when I stepped out on the mat, I know that I was, I was looking to always kind of rise to the occasion, right? And, and I knew that I trained really hard. And, and Czar, I've seen him, he trains really hard. So you just have to, as much as you're rising to the occasion, you got to fall back on your training too mm -hmm. and, and be able to go out there and remind yourself that, this circle is, 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 is another, or is the same circle that you've wrestled in since you were a kid. Um, and I think that the nerves are part of it, but um, the more you can kind of just, just limit the, the out external noise and just focus on, you know, treating it like any other wrestling match, I think that that's where you can break through as a freshman. Um, and, and there's a level of confidence that, y that I, you have to have that I know um, Czar has that, that also is a big help. It, it's confident not knowing that you're, <laughs> you're the yeah. freshman, right? The irrational confidence is certainly helpful sometimes. Yeah. I'm a big proponent for it. I have plenty of it, so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the irrational confidence is what uh, got me on the mic tonight, I think. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, strong first period for Fedelin. Uh, racks up 111 in riding time and, and is a solid takedown. He's going to choose bottom, it looks like, for the second period here. And 12 league. escapes uh, versus Michigan's one. Um, kind of a, an interesting statistic, right? <laughs> yeah. I think if you're Michigan, you're okay with, with being the one uh, with less escapes. Um, you know, that means that you're, you're getting the takedowns, right? Yeah, let's <laughs> show that graphic. <laughs> <laughs> takedowns graphic might be a little lopsided as well. Yeah, but, you know, back to, I think, you know, talking a little bit more. We were talking about the coaches and um, nice escape. I don't know. great escape. I think that if you're if you're a coach, uh, you know, if you're your coach for met here, you're almost doing this in a strategic way, right? Um, it's it's great to have freshmen stepping in and kind of seeing where they kind of size up. Well, there's the there's that graphic. Columbia <laughs> has ten takedowns. Michigan has three. That doesn't seem right. 
I feel like we might have to fix that graphic. <laughs> Did it mean to say 30? Ooh, nice, nice move there from Zarr to clear yeah, that going tie for up. the elbow shuck and getting underneath. His action is picked up here. And Walker showing some of his explosive nature. I think that, you know, if if, if you're Zarr out there, you're looking to get, you know, get to your strong suits, which are those kind of high leg, upper body finishes, avoid the scrambles. But you want to stay in on the leg there. I think that that's, he, he kind of, you know, as a freshman, that's that's something that. I like that action. mat awareness though. He did a good job right there. Instead of kind of conceding and backing out, circling his way back in, and then even taking the action out of bounds himself. So despite being down 4-0 right now, he's certainly showing some maturity and, and mat awareness for a freshman. Bedlin, though, doing the same thing, being a, and being a veteran, ball. you know, being being somebody who's been in the lineup before and, and been in a lot of these big college matches. He's doing a great job controlling the center of the mat. Pushing Zar to the edge. Yeah, you, I think here you have a, you know, a young, a young buck that has a lot of explosive talent, probably more, more likely to make mistakes. Um, but in that same regard, it's a double-edged sword where he has the offense to create a lot of explosive action. And Fedelin just doing a really a really great job of staying in, a good staying in good position, looking for those little windows of opportunity that you can spot as a veteran and trying to capitalize on those. Absolutely. Really, really controlling with those underhooks. And, and a stall is. call, which will make the match 5-0, Fedelin. How how much does a game plan like that, like knowing that you've got those stall calls and you're able to control that, does that change his his approach as far as you know attacking a score versus attacking? There it is. By the way, ten ten takedowns. For there Michigan we go. For Columbia. <laughs> there it is. We can spot we spotted that one pretty quick, Kevin. <laughs> <Yeah. here. laughs> You know, our, our wrestling math, we might not be great mathematicians, no. but our wrestling math is, exactly. is at least pretty solid. Wrestling math is strong. <laughs> That's like a level above algebra. <laughs> <laughs> um, but back to um, back to, to Walker, I think that, yeah, I, I mean, that stall call really does change this match because um, you're looking at, you know, you can get an escape and a takedown if you don't give up that stall call and the match is tied. Mm -hmm. But now you're looking at, you know, riding time adding up right now. And once you get out, if he almost does so right there. Close. Let's see if he can clear it. Fedelin doing a really good job again of just that mad awareness, knowing that the, he wasn't fully cleared yet, circling behind him. Yeah, Keep and if you're escape. Walker now, you're looking at him, you know, short time and really having to go right there's <laughs> there, there's really no other game plan than go um, you're, you're really pulling all the tricks out of the hat trying to get up to your feet first right you, it's hard to create offense from the bottom position so well and at this point too you know dual wrestling versus tournament wrestling changes a little bit right I mean if you're czar you want to you know go out there and try to get the escape and get a takedown and ultimately win the match but also from a team score standpoint, you don't want to give up a major. Yep. And, and I think that you could see uh, Fedelin a little bit uh, kind of creating that game plan of looking for a major. Yeah. Um, kind of lets him go there. He's already doing a but good I job. Love the He's not going to go down without swinging. Literally sometimes. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the physicality, if you if you can't see that, uh, you know, on TV, that's what we're talking about with those those heavy clubs and physicality. Yeah. Nice job clearing that tie again. Action picking up, 20 seconds left in this bout. Great shot nice. from Walker. Let's Inside see if he can one. finish this. Inside each single. Won't, won't secure the match, but maybe a consolation takedown. And Fedelin looking to to get a major here. Zara doing a great job holding on. Exactly. Keeps it a regular decision. Goes down swinging. 
Great match from both of these guys. Absolutely. You know, uh, Fedelin, I think, being the veteran, doing a great job, like I said. Finding his windows and capitalizing, um, even you know, just from a, a hand fighting standpoint, getting the underhook, getting that stall call was crucial. But Walker not going down without a fight. Not at all, man. It was. Uh, you got to be excited if you're the Michigan staff. Uh, you know, to see a guy go out there, wrestle really, really hard all the way through the seven minutes. Um, and again, you know, kept it a regular decision. So, uh, Dominic Rossetti for Columbia. Coming up against Zach Matt uh, uh, for the Wolverines here. Yeah, so Zach Matten, one of the many Matten boys that have come through Michigan. You know, oh, yeah. His, his brother Cole and Drew, um, both of my teammates. And it, it, it's great to see, you know, the, the family legacy continuing and, and Zach getting a chance right now to, you know, toe the line for the Wolverines. Um, I think that. Zach has, has really put in his time. You know, he's worked really hard and, 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 you know, worked for opportunities like this. So I'm excited to see the outcome of this match. You know, I think Rosetti's a good opponent and should see some fireworks. You've seen a lot of them tonight, huh, Kevin? Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and again, uh, just going back to Matt, and like, he's been a guy who's been battling to get into the lineup i mean it's it's tough uh always at michigan to, to be that starter so it's it's exciting to see him get this opportunity today against columbia yeah and zach is a, a graduate student so this was this is his fifth year um which is common in wrestling but you know a, a lot of other people they think you're going to to be a doctor which i believe zach Matten is going to be a doctor <laughs> If he's following in, in his, his family's footsteps, which <laughs> those Mattons love being doctors. It's it's good for, for the wrestlers because they can they can go see somebody from all the, the years of injury that have accumulated. Exactly. There's Donnie Pritzloff, who we talked about earlier, first season as head coach. Was associate head coach at Rutgers the 10 seasons before then. Had a lot of success there. Um, I think he coached two national champions there at Rutgers uh, while he was there. So. There's Zach coming out here ready to go. A Delta, Ohio native, which is not too far from Michigan. It's you know, a little bit over an hour. Matten coming out and coming forward right away. A lot of movement, a lot of good hand fighting from him. Nice shot there. You saw him working for that two on one earlier, he uses it to post up and get on that, uh, that single leg. Got to pull that in, keep it in bounds. Yeah, this is a this is an interesting spot here, right? He's got double duty trying to finish the shot, but also not go out of bounds. And I, we, we do go out of bounds. It's hard enough to finish the shot, let alone to keep it, you know, within a small area. They're back on their feet. Matt goes right back to that two on one. You don't see the two on one too often in college, so it's, it's I always love to see guys still utilizing it. I think it's a a great way to basically shut down a guy's offense mm -hmm. while, you know, working towards yours. Um, and at the very least, when you wrestle, you know, guys that, that have high-flying offense, if, you, if you're used to a two-on-one position like this, you can really kind of counteract, counteract any of his, his offense. Well, it isolates a whole side, yep. you know. And if that's the side you want to attack with, then you're even in a worse spot. I was going to say, Matt was doing a really good job controlling kind of the, the, the mat. No takedown yet. Yeah, not yet. And oh. are they going to award it? Nothing. Pretty close. We're, we're battling on the edge, and the challenge brick comes out. There it is. Colum a lot of threes coming from the Columbia bench, including Coach Donnie Pritzloff. I think they they thought that they, they got a takedown secured right there. So we're going to go to the, the booth. and Yeah, I... I be interested to see uh, the replay there because it looked like you know he went in on a shot, just kind of lost the edge, and then tried to stand up real quick to not you know give up that takedown. Yeah, and for 
wrestling rules are changing all the all the time, right? So, um, you know, for the most up-to-date rule, you have to secure the position, which I correct was, me. It was what different it, last year. Yeah. So it was different. It was different last year. Yeah. Okay. It was I, the way I remember it. <laughs> is it was basically like there was no reaction time. Yep. And now there is. So there was reaction time last year, I believe. Because I remember a few NCAA finals matches that were decided by the reaction time. You're correct. It was two years ago. Yep. Yep. So last year was the first year where we introduced reaction time, which to dumb it down is basically if Zach's hand would have touched and he was behind, that's a, that's a three-point takedown in the past. But now he needs to basically secure the position in order for the ref to award the takedown, which is a little bit more subjective, but it allows for, I think, more scrambling, more kind of consistency in, in a way that a lot of times it's a flash takedown and then a guy can come up to his feet and you award three and it gets a little confusing in that way as well. Yeah, no, 100%. So I think that's what we're looking at. We're looking at, you know, in, in the traditional sense, I know a lot of you watching might have thought it's a takedown, but he needs the reaction time of Matten. Um, it, it is taken into consideration uh, with that takedown. So he had to fully secure the takedown, which that is what the refs are decide, deciding right now. Was he behind and was Zach, Zach's hand down for long enough to secure it? Yep, yep. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. And it's one of those things, too, where, you know, if they didn't rule it a takedown first, is there going to be indisputable evidence to overturn it, right? Which I don't know if they're going to get. But uh, time will tell here. Time will tell. And if... If they're showing, I, I think we got a shot of Matten, and he's already got a nose plug in. There we is, go. Is a, uh, that's, a, that's a signature Matten nose plug right there. <laughs> I think they've taken up probably a couple hundred pounds of nose plugs over their time with the Wolverines. I like it. <laughs> well, again, there's, there's that physicality we were talking about. Let's see what we got. And, and they it said is awarded. it is the takedown. Good challenge by Pritzloff and company. So Rossetti gets the first takedown. Very impressive for him to win that exchange. Nice mat return for him as well. Yeah, I was really impressed with Rossetti's ability to kind of stay stay on that takedown too. After, you know, I, I think that he, he really made a case for himself for the takedown because there was probably two or three times where the refs could have called the takedown. He made sure that the when they went back and reviewed that evidence that you know he could he could state his case pretty clearly. Yeah, you can call it here, here, or here. <laughs> yeah. We're back up to our feet though, Matten with the escape. Again, staying physical with that hand fight. A lot of movement you'll see from Matten. Ooh. Nice fake. Yeah, he just got to control control that far arm and kind of went, went hip toss almost in a way. Tried to scoop by him, but Matten scrambling out cat-like. Oh, and there it nice is again. Little. Rossetti with some slick moves here. Just getting the edge, getting the angle. And yeah, it, it looks like, right, from watching, Matten is the aggressor. Um, but Rossetti is just doing a great job of using Matten's aggression to, to kind of counter that and, and get, get to some scoring opportunities. If, if you're Matten, are you kind of recognizing this in the moment and thinking, all right, maybe the movement isn't helping, or do you stick to your game plan? I think you have to stick to your game plan, you know, um, and and just trust that there is going to be multiple opportunities to get to some to get to your score, and also that everything you're doing is wearing right. His, nice as I say that, you know, Matten getting caught underneath, but clinching, controlling in this position. And yeah, I've been I've been really impressed with Rossetti. I think it it does throw you off a little bit to say. <laughs> at least question, am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. Rossetti's just doing a good job holding position, not doing too much. That's a call. Ooh. A legal hold of some sort? Yeah. One point. This is a legal hold. I'm, I'm not sh totally sure what that was for. 
But that makes this match more interesting yeah. now, you know. 3-2. Matt continuing to move aggressively, continuing to try to isolate that uh, that right arm of Rossetti. I that was wondering again. when that two-on-one was coming back. Beautiful nice shot from attack. Rossetti. Just timed that leg coming forward perfectly. Again, just you gotta isolate the leg here. You gotta choose where you're gonna attack. Yep. Methodically move through the position. He's doing a great job just slowly shifting his hips, trying to get his belly down to the mat. And as I say that, Matten does a great job of, of rolling him through and speeding up that process to get to more of a 50-50 position. And a stalemate. How often do you get in that position in practice and just like have to keep wrestling? Or do you just stop there too? <laughs> um, you know, I think that that's a position that is really emphasized in practice, but also just when, you, when you're in live, like you said, scrambling has just become more and more popular with college wrestling, especially with the folk style rules. Um, you know, it's, there's no exposure, right? You can roll and kind of create these crazy positions without giving up points. So that position I am in very often, <laughs> and I love to talk about it because I think that, you know, I, I that's kind of was my bread and butter in college was I like to shoot. So you, you had to you had to figure out how to finish from there. And, you know, I think guys are really good defensively there. It's, it's just a, a like a point of emphasis for a lot of guys once they get to college to, to play in that position. So that that's where my my advice of being methodical, I guess it comes from a little bit of experience that, you know, when I was a freshman, I thought, you know, just try to bust out and and um, you know like you said I, I was the one that was skipping steps and trying to get straight to the takedown and kind of learn the hard way so it, it really is a position where you just have to secure one leg at a time or, or really know what your your focus is and and then it's just it, and there's always going to be that that element of you know a guy can just be holding you too tight in that position to, to create anything from it so now it's all right let's create a, let's get a stalemate and just get back up to our feet absolutely Matt doing a really good job not getting that return there. The rule in college wrestling is you have to let him go after a couple seconds. Otherwise, they'll call stalling from the uh, the top man there. So, Rosetti doing a good job letting him go uh, to avoid the stall call. And all of a sudden, it's a 3-3 bout. No riding time in the third. Yeah, and this is where, if, if you're batting, you're thinking, okay, this is, I'm hoping this is where my game plan plays off, right? I've done a really good job of pressuring forward. Hopefully it's wearing on him a little bit. And, you know, I, I can get to my, my go-to attack with a little, bit less resi a, a little bit less resistance from him. Now, Rossetti has done a great job this whole match of kind of showing that that game plan, shutting it down, right, and, and almost presenting an offense of his own from his defense, so. Absolutely. I think we'll, we'll see something exciting with 45 seconds left in the match. That's that's something I'm sure of. Ooh, a nice shot. As I said, a great double leg. Deep. Oh, and good defense from Matt. And putting that wizard. wizard on, hipping down hard. And Matt's got to keep wrestling in this position. He's got his leg caught in the middle there. Yep, you want to just put as much pressure on that left side and as he does there just to kind of create that stalemate. Great job from Madden to counteract that double. You'd rather be on your feet in the open than, than fighting from that wizard position. Yeah, he was in deep right there, Rosetti was. And you know that I think that <laughs> that wizard came out of desperation, but you know, sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures and gives himself another chance, another you know, another day to to fight. Well, just like early in the match, that pace of Matten is, is looking good right now. Rossetti's kind of on his heels, trying to circle back in. This last second shot. And we're going to overtime. Here we go. Our first overtime of the season here, of the dual meet season, that is. Sudden victory, two minutes on our feet. First takedown wins. 
If not, we'll go to rideouts. But the way this match has been going, we might see a takedown. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to call. You got to love a match that's 3-3, but you feel like the action is was much more than that. That's definitely been this one so far. A lot of good attacks, a lot of good Oh, and a nice head tap. Shot. Hit on the high crotch. Is he going to elevate this one? Or he's going to isolate that leg again? Meanwhile, Rossetti's trying to what kick out in the here. armpit. Oh, wow, and another shot from Matten to continue that roll through. He's got to hold on to the leg and get those hips down. Nothing yet. Rossetti, meanwhile, trying to step over and collect that leg. As long as Matten can keep that grip right there, he, he'll be okay. But And they're on the edge of the mat. Oh, and he's going to hit in. try to jump his hips over, but he's got to be careful that he doesn't overextend himself. And while Rossetti's trying to secure that leg. And wow, Matten wow. looking at. Oh, no, now he's in trouble. Oh, oh there's the three point takedown for Rossetti. A wild scramble turns what into. What a finish. Yeah. Very impressive takedown for Rossetti. Yeah, Rossetti, Rossetti found himself <laughs> kind of back and forth there, but, but stayed on the leg and ended up in a kind of a funky position to finish the match. Yeah. You know, it looked like he could have gone either way, but Rossetti just comes out resilient there. He was looking for near fall even at the end. The yeah, and he did that, get some near fall. That so. got caught, so. Nice win for Rossetti. Three uh, point takedown, two, two point near fall to end the match. Absolutely. That win, so. Um, and he was named Ivy League Wrestler of the Week for that win. There you go, exactly, it helps, it helps. Uh, when you get big falls and, and winning matches, so. Um, but no, he's he's uh, one of the, the tougher guys in the, the Columbia lineup, so I'm sure he's gonna be coming out here aggressive and, and looking to set the tone in the second half of this duel for the, uh, the Lions. Yep, so five matches remaining. Um, Michigan in the driver's seat, but still a lot of great wrestling that we, we have yet to see. And it'll be exciting to see who Michigan throws out at 165. It will which be. We'll see will shortly. Be. One sixty-five kind of in flux for the Wolverines here as uh, the guy that they had planned, Bo Mantonona, ended up uh, getting hurt. So they've got his younger brother Brock, true freshman. Uh, from Bermuda Dunes, California, coming in here to, to step in for his older brother, who you know was likely going to be the guy this year for them. Immediately Great shot in on a shot, right, right, right. and right away getting the first takedown. takedown Those Mantonona boys are, are pretty fun to watch compete. Yeah, I think that when when talking about the future of Mich Michigan wrestling. Um, the Mantononas are probably at the forefront of that conversation. Um, you know, we, we are all really excited to, to have them. And, you know, I remember when Bo, Bo committed, it felt like a really big win for the program, knowing that there was a chance we could get Brock as well. So, you know, kind of realizing a little bit of that vision that, that Sean had to get these guys out here. And kind of rekindling the California pipeline for Michigan, as you know, they have a couple more recruits that are committed from California. And you can see why, as Brock already getting two takedowns on the number 25th ranked wrestler in the country as a true freshman. Very impressive, and both both attacks just getting low on that ankle, picking it up, uh, and finishing you know soundly. Um, it's it's not that often you see a true freshman at 165 pounds able to jump into the lineup and compete with nationally ranked guys, but uh, these Mantonona boys are are something different. Yeah, and. Both of these guys having international experience, which is pretty cool to see. Um, you know, Brock Mantonona on the, the age group level, winning a, a world bronze medal uh, as a ju at the juniors. And Cesar Alvin holding his own as a multiple time Pan American medalist um, for Brazil, for the country of Brazil. So these guys have wrestled at all levels. Absolutely. And Alvin, you know, doing a great job really Looks like getting kind of reestablished here. He's getting to his offense now, um, controlling the tie-ups, being real physical right now. Did a good job circling back, getting to the center of the mat. Yeah, and the, and the Mantononas, they, um, you know, they, they all have such a unique style um, where they can kind of change levels. 
and their and use their length to to get to you when you feel like you're in a safe position. Um, I think that that's what they do best, and they like to work from outside ties, elbows, over ties, which is another kind of really really hard style to go up against because you're you're thinking you're in the driver's seat with a, an inside tie and a collar or a wrist, and they're 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 plotting their next attack from that outside tie or elbow. And you, I think that it's it caught Alvin off guard already twice in this match. Oh yeah, you can see it. You know, Alvin Alvin has done a good job kind of reestablishing himself, getting position here, getting into his tie ups, um, and like you said, knowing that he can't feel too comfortable in any position. Yeah, and a beautiful, right. beautiful low single to the body lock. Oh boy! And oh wow, boy. Brock is going to put him on his back there. Beautiful body lock to the three-point takedown at the buzzer. Did you see that? <laughs> a little smile from Brock to the crowd. That was nice. That was nice. Smile and a wink from Brock. I think he even knew that that was, that was a pretty slick transition. Yeah, right. Impressed through the himself cameras. a little bit. <laughs> Gotta love people having fun out there, you know? This is too hard of a sport to not have some fun with it. Yeah. I think that if uh, if you could if you could put up against one another the, a wrestler's success and the amount of times they smile when they're on the mat those might be very heavily correlated, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially at this level. I think that the guys that are having fun, you know, they're they're more likely to to take it to to the next level or you know really bring good results. Absolutely. One thing to point out too, uh, with with Brock coming out here at 165, is the the new rules with red shirts. Um, you know, you saw his his brother Bo get to jump into the lineup for the Wolverines last year a couple different times. I think you're allowed to have five different showings, um, you know, in wrestling without burning your red shirt eligibility. Um, how how helpful is that to be able to you know get a look at these guys against some top uh, top competition? Oh, it's crucial. I think, you know, when when looking at a red shirt season. You're, you're really not getting to experience, or in the past you weren't getting to experience what it really was like to wrestle in a, in a college dual meet or, or a true college setting. Um, and you know, getting those, those five matches, I feel like it, it gives you a taste of, of what's to come, and it kind of keeps you hungry, it keeps you fresh. Um, and a lot of times it gives the coaches the option to say, is he ready, you know, even as a, as a true freshman? Um, because in the past, it's, you're kind of rolling the dice as you throw that guy out there. But if you, you have a guy like Brock who is able to go out there and beat some ranked guys and sh show that he's ready to, to get on the podium as a true freshman, it gives you the option of maybe saying, hey, we can, we can pull his red shirt and, and throw, him, throw him out there. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, getting your and first, I mean, getting your first uh, action against the top 25 guy and, and being as aggressive and, and dominating in the way that he is right now. Uh, I'm sure that's going to spark some more conversations amongst the coaching staff. Yeah, I think if you're if you're the, the Michigan coaching staff here, um, you ha this is a good problem to have, right? Um, you you have a guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have a guy that uh, you know you you can either save for the years to come, or you can put him in this season, and you know he can make an, an immediate impact. And that's the kind of guys you want to recruit, right? Is the ones that are ready to go right off the bat. Especially another thing that we can touch on is the NIL era of college yeah. wrestling, where you know you don't know that necessarily you have a guy for four years. So being able to get them in and have them ready to go as soon as they get here is a major advantage. Well, and give them, you know, people want the chance to compete. You know, having the chance, whether it's whether it's on those first five. Uh, Five opportunities, or or for the full, for the full season, you know, you want to have that chance to get out there, throw the singlet on, and get some action. Fifteen to three. Yeah, and, and a takedown here would do it for Mantonona, which is, I think, sh shocking for for a lot of us here. Um, you know, I, I I think there's a lot of potential coming out of Brock, but to to kind of see it up close and in person. The Columbia bench is probably wondering, you know, where did this guy come from? Right. Well, and again, to reiterate, you know, Caesar Albin, highly ranked guy. He's got great wins over his career. Um, 
you know, and again, at times it looked like he was kind of reestablishing the center, reestablishing his tie-ups, but Brock has done a really, really good job continuing to be aggressive and uh, to show the versatility of attacks and finishes that he has. Yeah, we were, we were talking about the word dynamic wrestler right earlier with um, some of some of the lighter weights, and um, I think that the the Mantenonas basically <laughs> embody that term Ooh, right as he's that looking body right lock. here for a body lock, and um, the action goes out of bounds. Yeah, you you'll see them. I mean, he's transitioned from that low ankle to the body, I think a couple times in this match. And you just don't see many guys that are able to, to make that kind of transition. It's almost thought of as bad technique in a way of mm -hmm. coming up off the leg to the body. But they're just an immediate threat when they get to that body lock position. And it, it just makes it, you know, that much harder to wrestle a guy like Brock or Bo or, you know, even his brother Anthony who was uh, uh, wrestling during my era. I remember <laughs> they always had that kind of X factor that, you know, you, you kind of worry about as an opponent, but you, you love as a teammate or as a coach. Mm -hmm. Well, and then that's the other piece is the, you know, it's one thing to go from the leg to the body lock, but to to, to be ready to throw from there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of people get in that body lock position and really have any intention to do anything with it. <laughs> yeah, the, the intention matters, right? There's yeah. a, there's the, <laughs> the threat of the, you know, going upper body to, to threaten it, but they're they're using it to, to, get to score. And as I say that, yeah. Mantenono locks up the tech fall over the number 25th ranked wrestler in the country in Caesar Alvin. And you wow. gotta you gotta appreciate Alvin. I mean you could tell he he wanted to go get a takedown there. You know, he was he was not gonna go out of this match without giving a legit attempt to go get some points and, and you know show what he's capable of. And in that instance it just didn't work out for him and ended up giving up that final uh, final takedown for the tech. Yeah, and what an important point in the duel here, you know, Michigan going down the last two matches, losing them and kind of getting some some momentum back was Columbia, but you know, probably the match that you think you got secured, you end up going and not only that, but you're giving up, you know, bonus points. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's tough for the uh, the momentum that they were, were hoping to keep rolling. But uh, yeah, now we're gonna have Jack McGill for Columbia going up against Joseph Walker. Walker just coming off of uh, winning the Clarion Open a couple weeks ago. Uh, I was talking to him last week at the MSU Open, and he reminded me now he's got the helmet from Clarion Open, and he's got uh, a sword <laughs> from the Edinburgh Open. So full gladiator mode, yeah. just in time for the new movie. Exactly. Yeah, Walker is somebody, when we talk about, you know, waiting to, to be in the lineup, I think that he's he's been somebody that's, you know, had some marquee wins in tournaments and duels, but he's always found himself behind some of the best guys in the country. You know, last year, Shane Griffith coming in as a grad transfer, ended up finishing third at the NCAA tournament. And, you know, Joe, that, that's a really tough task to, to be the guy that, you know, has to kind of think he's going to crack his way into the lineup and then, you know, sit back on the sidelines. And so you always wonder how they're going to respond to that. And, you know, he's had a really strong start to this season. I think he's ready to establish himself as the guy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's, he's a guy that you've been talking with me about, you know, just what he does in the room and, and how, how consistent he is with his preparation and everything. So you, you love to see a, a program guy like that getting his chance in the lineup. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, McGill here is, is also a senior. So you, you have some, some veterans going at it. Um, and... You know, you can see just from, from the beginning of the match, right, a, a lot of kind of chess match being played with some fakes and and uh, from both guys and just trying to, to establish a hand fight and, and establish your dominant tie early on in the match. Walker going to play the edge game here. Let's see if he can get this takedown. Very close. Did a good job keeping his foot in the cylinder there. Yeah, and great job from McGill. I mean... If, if you're on the edge and somebody's in on your leg, you got to realize that that's the advantage. you got to play to that advantage, and I think he did a great job there of realizing that, like I said, Walker's kind of, he's, he's working on two things at once there. Looking for a crusher. Good transitions from that front headlock, too, trying to still get to the ankles. Yeah, great action here. We're still, we're still tied at 0-0, zero, zero, but... Not a not a boring match by any means. You know, some 
Some big attempts early on. In this over under position. If you're Walker, you got to circle in. If you're McGill, you're trying to. Yeah, this is a, a, a little bit of a, a more looks like more of a threat than a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you're 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 trying to play that edge game and and look at maybe driving him out of bounds, but we get a stalemate and we're we're back center. Yep. Official figure they weren't really trying to do much from that over under position. Let's get him back in the center and create some more action. Nice fake. Good response from McGill fighting that underhook in there to clear that tie. I like the, the pace from, from Walker here. He's had a couple good fakes, a couple good attempts at the leg. Hasn't quite gotten there yet, but. Yeah, the, the movement is there, right? And, and I think that he, he's realizing that, that, you know, kind of like we were talking about earlier, you sometimes you just got to trust the process and, and know that th your game plan is your game plan. And as I say, that beautiful shot yeah. from Walker, just low single, right oh. at the buzzer too. You got to love that if you're a Michigan wrestling coach. Those takedowns at the like that don't allow even for a chance of somebody to get an escape, that's, that's a huge game changer in these matches, especially with the three point takedown. I know in practices you go over situations, scenarios, you know, 10 seconds left, down by two, that sort of thing, and your scrambles, but um, how often is that emphasized in, in you know, practice settings about you know, late period scoring? Um, I think we talk about it all the time, especially you know, a guy that I want to give a shout out to this is Kevin Jackson. He's, you know, he's, he's coached at the, the world level and, and really you know, is a, a head of, or the head of the, you know, the Olympic and, and world team for the United States uh, wrestling program. And I think that they, they like to pay attention a little bit to more to statistics at that level. And so you look at those, how much of a, your winning percentage goes up when you get a takedown at the end of a period or the end of a match. And it, it really drastically increases your chances of winning. So, you know, he really came in and, and we emphasize and we play those positions of down by one with 15 seconds to go, or you got to go get a score with short time. And kind of, I, I think more so than, than playing that position is just even, it's a mental game of knowing what is my go-to attack with 30 seconds left or with 15 seconds left in a period. Because it, just being really clear about that, and I'm, I'm kind of using his verbiage here, it's like you want to be clear about what that looks like. Because otherwise it's, it's, it's probably not going to show up in a match, right? Just you're not going to have that aha moment or that epiphany. So being able to, to practice that, I think he's done a great job of kind of reiterating that in our room. Absolutely. McGill doing a really good job here. He with, looks like picking up the sense of urgency almost. He did a really great job being physical, getting his escape on the edge. Uh, he's kind of taking control of the center of the mat here. Yeah, great. I, I, I think McGill has wrestled a great match. Um, you know, that's what's, that's what's crazy about those takedowns is it's just a quick, you know, a quick takedown. And, and McGill, almost it almost felt like it was a very 50-50, if not, McGill more controlling center than, than Walker. It definitely in the second period he has been. Mm -hmm. And if you're him, you just gotta, again, just keep wrestling. And, and Walker, you're, you're, you're winning, but you can't take your foot off the gas pedal. Right. Riding time not really a factor at this point with only 28 seconds. You gotta assume Walker's gonna choose down here. She does. Now we'll see Walker how down. Good, yeah, we'll see how good Jack McGill is at riding. What his strategy is going to be from here. Looks like we got an escape. Yep, there we go. And looking right, right for a transition take down there is Walker, and that's that's really exciting to see. I know we, um, if you follow Michigan wrestling, you know Walker has been. That was a great nice, on his nice feet. counter attack from McGill. It was. Wow. <laughs> Finds himself out of bounds. But as I was saying, Walk Walker has, you know, that's been a big point of emphasis for him. It's just, you know, being able to be quick off the bottom. And I think that as he develops this season, you're, you're really hoping that that will continue to be, you know, one of his strong suits, weakness turned strong suits. So now let's see if he can finish the match where I, th I think he wants to be. Um, 
But McGill, you know, it, all it takes is one. <laughs> and then who knows? Well, and it's going to be interesting to see the approach here from Walker as well. Nice shot from McGill. That's what I was going to say. He's gotten, he's like kind of gone for that high crotch to the right leg of McGill several times. He hasn't actually gotten the leg. Yeah, it almost puts, it, it, it looks like Walker's getting through, but he's he's kind of shooting, it. His, his shoulders are, you know, a little bit too wide, and he's kind of missing the body of McGill. Mm -hmm. A little bit over 30 seconds remaining in this match. Yeah, this is go time if you're McGill. Yeah, you do not want to be ear to ear if you're McGill right now. You want to clear this tie and look for your touch and go setups. A nice but shrug from Walker. Yeah, Walker doing a great job. Just stay in hold position here. Stick with your your basics here, your wrestling fundamentals. Nice reattack. This is, if you're Walker, you almost just want to hold on to the leg. Yeah, last five seconds. And he gets the takedown. Good job from McGill there at the end, even trying to throw that, that last kind of kitchen sink effort. Yeah, it came down to the wire, but Joe Walker is the victor at 7-1 to one as we go into our 184-pound match. And that, that match was full of, it seemed like highlights, or half highlights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A lot of almost scores. But Walker, obviously, you know, getting those two scores and, you know, one at the end of the, actually both, both at the end, at the of, end periods, of the period. Yeah. Which again, you know, that's that's something that they've they've emphasized as a staff. So I'm, I'm sure they're gonna be happy with, with Walker's performance right there. Well, and again, with McGill, I, I, I hate when I watch matches just end with guys losing and they're not doing anything. like. There's no harm in giving up that takedown. He didn't give up a major. He didn't give up any extra team points. And at least he, you know, went out trying something, trying to get the win on his own. Yeah, you want to end the match, you know, knowing that you kind of, you exhausted the tank. Mm -hmm. And I think that McGill really did. It was just a matter of those two late takedowns by Walker. So now at 184, we're going to have a ranked Wolverine against Nick Fine from Cumberland, Rhode Island. He's a junior. Yeah, Jaden Bullock currently ranked 15th in the country coming out here, uh, originally from Virginia. Um, Jaden's been awesome. I mean, he's been, you know, another one of those guys. He got kind of his, his first shot full time in the lineup last season. Uh, had some good success. Uh, wrestled really well uh, at 184. His, his offense on his feet is really, really good. Um, talk a little bit about his progression over the years. I know he was a teammate of yours uh, while you were with the program. Yeah, I've, I've been, it's been something special to watch, especially last year, Jaden come out. Um, but we knew he had talent when I think he was a redshirt freshman or a true freshman, and he wrestled Aaron Brooks to a 10-7 match here in Chrysler Arena. And there were some situations where he did some things that <laughs> I don't think I've seen many guys do before. So to see that him go from that progression and then he had some slumps with some injuries and just kind of being behind some really high level guys um it's been really special to watch him kind of come up and what i love about Jaden is that he kind of has he has a confidence that he's supposed to be here um, and that he's supposed to be winning and be on the podium even last year i think that a lot of people saw it as a breakthrough season for him but he was disappointed in how it finished you know he, he deserved that he believed to be on the podium and um, you know, the way that he wrestles, you can see he kind of has that tenacity on the mat that he'll wrestle some of the best guys in the country or world to a one-point match, and he's, he's right in it. So, or he's willing to go out there and, and, you know, just give you everything he has. So it's been exciting, and, and I, I hope that that's the, the same thing we get out of Jaden this season. I'm sure it is. Absolutely. Like I referenced, ranked 15th currently by Intermat. Yeah, what I love love about of Jaden is he's not afraid to let it go. So I'm I'm sure you're gonna see some some last doubles this match. You'll see some, you know, some attacks from his feet. Um, as there I say that, <laughs> <laughs> lowers the level, shoots in, finds a single, lifts it up. Ooh, couldn't secure it. Yeah, good job to get his foot down there, is Nick Fine. Um, <laughs> that you know, in that high leg position. Usually you find yourself dead to rights, yeah. but it's a precarious position to be in. Let's go, Jake! Let's go, Jake! 
But yeah, Bullock will um, will continue to fire. So if, if you're fine, you're you're looking at you know trying to slow the match down a little bit, trying to get to your own attacks um, to to kind of slow him down as well. Um, I think that you know the higher this this match, the score of this match would favor somebody like Jaden Bullock, who likes to put up points and likes to be you know in big big scrambles, kind of big moves um, in that territory. So. So far, though, we are scoreless a minute and a half into the first period. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed right now with Fine and how he's doing a good job kind of keeping center of the mat, not opening up too much to allow for too many opportunities for, for Jaden to get in there. And Fine is from Cumberland, Rhode Island, which you love to see because, you know, Rhode Island, not necessarily your traditional wrestling state. You know, no. it's not one of the staple states. And... So it's, it's always great to see guys kind of branch out from, from some of these these not, not so talked about states and, and make it to the big level. Well, and if I remember correctly, I think there is, so each of those states has their own state championships and then there's a separate like New England championships. So they bring all those, those states in there together for a, a bigger tournament. But yeah, it's always good to see your, your less traditional places with some, some college wrestlers. And really fine looking for a takedown fine. here. Bullock finding himself in <laughs> an interesting scramble. Wow. Very impressive movement. And this is fun to watch guys. right here. Wow. Bullock looked dead to rights. Then Fine looked dead to rights. And this we find ourselves 50 50. <laughs> this, is, this is worth the price of admission by itself. Fine trying to clear that ankle. Jacob, or excuse me, Jaden trying to do the exact opposite. And I think we're going to end this period scoreless. But not without action, that's for sure. Yes. No points, lots of excitement. That almost looked like a jiu-jitsu match right there. There's a lot <laughs> of rolling around. Looked like Jaden was trying to get the back. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was wild. But no, if you're if you're fine, I mean you're probably pretty happy about uh, where you're sitting in this match uh, after the first period, zero zero. You know how? Yeah, I think I think if you're fine, um, this is this is great. I mean you're 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 looking at zero zero. You got in on a nice shot. Um, with a very, very high probability to finish and just kind of, you know, you, whenever you get to those shots, you can't be discouraged that you don't finish. You just know that, you know, you got to keep chipping away and, and keep trying to keep that, you know, those shots in motion. So I think you're, you're looking at this period as a win for, for fine. And if you're Bullock, you're probably thinking, <laughs> all right, I, I gotta, I gotta pick it up. Yep. Um, you know, to. early shot from him, but then a little slowed down a little bit. Um, you know, later in that first period. Well, and I think what we're seeing right here is, is Fine is trying to make sure his knee's doing all right. You see it's got the wrap on it. That's one of those tricky things that happens sometimes with some of those scrambles where, you know, you just get tweaked a little bit or at a weird angle or it hits the mat Michigan different. The Michigan currently has 17 of the, uh, the takedowns to Columbia's five on the duel so far. Jaden right up to his feet, looking to clear. Jumps over, nice. That was a nice hip over. Great transition from that. He's got to clear his head and clear that arm. And the side headlock, he's got to be careful here. Yep, oh, so he's going to get hit with stalling. Ooh. Gives up the reversal and the stall call. And I'd be interested to see if Bullock's going to try to ride or bring it back up to his feet. I think for him, he's, you know, that's that's a that's a piece that if you're wanting to be, you know, an, an All-American or, or establish yourself as a top guy, you want to you want to you want to be able to work on your riding when you can, you know, for those big matches. Absolutely. Well, I mean, obviously, there's the riding time component to it, but you know, also it's just you're wearing people out. 
you're wearing them out, you're exhausting them, you're frustrating them when they can't get up and out. And we talked about the mat returns and how mentally that can affect somebody. Um, but almost getting out and then not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's also very discouraging. But Fine, Fine is back up to his feet. Nice escape there. Boy, with 24 seconds of riding time, so not a factor. So if you're Bullock here, that, that reversal kind of, you know, it builds your riding time, but he gets that escape and it, it kind of counteracts the, the reversal. Mm -hmm. So you're still looking at, you know, I, I, I got to go get to a score here, right, if you're, if you're Bullock. And if you're, you're fine, you're thinking, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. It's a one-point net gain, really, you know, if you're going to get the escape versus the reversal and then give up an escape. But, again, if you're Jaden Bullock, you're, you're so good on your feet, you're feeling pretty comfortable. Bullock is going to choose to start the third period in the down position, to no surprise. Did I miss it earlier? Did Fine choose top in the second? He must have. Uh, oh. <laughs> I think we... You might be right. That would make more sense than Jaden getting to choose twice. So we're going to go with that. And now we see why. I mean, Fine's putting yeah. on a good ride right now. He's got the legs in. Yeah, if he can establish this, this ride for the rest of the period, you know, we're, we're going to go to overtime with that riding time That's point. That's true. So not a bad strategy there from, from Fine. You know, wrestling somebody that, that has legs, right, and, and it looks like he's very comfortable from the double boot position. Um, it can be really frustrating as a bottom wrestler, um, especially if you can't if, if you you can't make that first move, right, to get to a hip or, you know, to, to shelf it and pull the leg across. Mm -hmm. So if you're Jaden here, it's really important that either you're not letting the leg in or you're you're getting that first move right away. Exactly. And the leg does come in. Well, and that's the thing we've seen with Fine. He seems comfortable throwing legs on either side uh, to yep. at least get that established. <laughs> oh, boy, here in we go. In a weird position. Let's see how this rolling, plays out. A little bit more rolling around. Great job by Fine to just continue to control this position. And Bullock, if, if, if I'm Bullock, oh, I want to get my, yep. Yep, he's got the leg. Is he going to get that reversal again? My hips away, and he's he's got to he's got to keep wrestling here because Fine is still getting riding time, and yes. if we get stalemate, it will be Fine on top. And now he does have the riding time at 109. If he can ride for the remaining 27 seconds, like you said, he'll get that riding time point and send it to overtime. Yeah, the first move is is, is crucial here for both guys, I think. back down to the mat and he's got the double boots and see if, you, if you're a bullock you do not want this the flat on the belly with double boots is that's a time killer you know mm -hmm. it's, it's going to take you 10 seconds just to clear that and so i think we got a good chance we're going to overtime here well and if you're fine you've got to still kind of look like you're working on top there so they don't blow a stalemate but time's going to run out here anyway yep and so an interesting interesting match we have here you know fine Really rising to the occasion against the number 15th ranked Jaden Bullock. Yes, this is this is an impressive uh, match here from Fine, and a great game plan. I mean, to, to choose top two periods in a row, and I think uh, Bullock uh, getting out in the second thought that he might have the, a similar, you know, kind of easy task in the third. And there was a totally different attitude in the ride, I think, by Fine in the third period. Absolutely, a lot of intentionality. Knew what he was trying to do. If you're Bullock, you got to feel pretty good here. Ooh, the knee. You can see Fine reacting, grimacing right there. Hate to see that in such a good match. Yeah, I wonder if the knee played a factor with the choice to, to choose top. Um, 
You know, because you can see he's definitely not as comfortable here as Bullock gets in on a shot. Ooh, now, ooh, now, now Jaden Z is in a bad spot. Yeah, and you don't like to see that. Just awkward position. You know, that those roll-throughs are just so dangerous for that exact reason is you just end up in really a two gumby positions, mm -hmm. you know, both both guys usually controlling a knee and well and it's tough too because you're you know, you're you're wrestling. All your muscles are exploding at, at different points there and sometimes if if your quad goes right when you're you're tweaked at the wrong angle, it's puts that much extra pressure right on that ligament. So hate to see it from a guy who's you know, we just talked about is battling his way into the lineup and having some success here. Hopefully this is just a, a quick thing for him. All right. All right. We're, so what's going on here? So we're going to have. So he gets choice because of the uh, injury time. So if Fine escapes here, he's going to get the win, which is obviously an interesting an interesting finish if we get that. Yeah, with it being sudden victory, any point wins. And, and that's going to be point. the match. And. Great match for Fine. I mean, you you don't you hate to see it end that way. Um, you know, I think we were we were in for some another great scramble like we saw in the first period, and Bullock ends up you know getting the injury time, and that's one of the rules of injury time is the other man will get choice, and in a position like overtime, the first point score wins no matter what position it's in. So, Fine will get the upset win over 15th ranked. Jaden Bullock. Really impressive win for Fine. And again, as the season gets going, you kind of figure out, you know, who's who's going to be able to step into the moments and, and win those big matches. So big impressive win for him. Here comes Jacob Cardenas. Alec was talking about him earlier on in this duel. Transfer from Cornell. Uh, using his final season, he used up all his eligibility at Cornell, still had one year left to compete, and uh, came here to Ann Arbor to wrestle for the Wolverines. And, you know, coming off of a U23 silver medal, I mean, he's he's ready to go. Currently ranked third in the country, so I'm sure he's uh, he's got some big goals on this season, national championship being one of them. Yep, and his opponent, Isaac Schmidt, um, from Skillman, New Jersey, He's a, a junior, a current junior, and he's got his hands full with, with Jacob Cardenas today. Um, you, you know, Cardenas coming off of a, a U23 World Silver Medal, actually the, the highest placer for Team USA, so really helping Team USA there and off to a, an early takedown. It's a nice aggressive double leg. Just blast you right through the, the head and hands of, of Schmidt. Yeah, Cardenas is, is, you know, he wrestles at 197, but he wrestle, his style almost matches that of a 165 or a 157 where he's able to lower his level and change speeds so well. And, you, you know, you don't get to see a lot of low singles or, you know, low doubles at, at these upper weights, but it really gives him an advantage, um, you know, I think at, at this higher weight. Well, you wrestled a 197 for a one season here at Michigan, and – you know, is that kind of what you noticed? I know you like to, to get low on those ankles as well. I mean, talk about the reaction time for some of these big guys versus some of the smaller ones. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> when I started off at 197, uh, I was trying to shoot my patented knee pull single my first few matches, and I realized I'm going to get some swipes here as Cardenas. Beautiful tilt there. But as I was saying, 
I shot a few of those those upper level shots, and I felt <laughs> I felt the strength in the hips of those 197 pounders, and it almost helped me get back to what I was good at, which is those lower shots. Um, forced me really to get back to those, and I felt that once I found that kind of found that rhythm, um, it really did give me a massive advantage because these guys just aren't really used to seeing that, mm -hmm. um, and that was something I noticed right away when I wrestled. Jacob when he came uh, here was some yeah, of my right shots he did a pretty tilt. good job great job another tilt another four and we might get a tech fall here in the first period we'll see um, but as soon as I wrestled him I noticed he was doing a good job of reacting to my attacks and then I found out because he has some of his own and big mat return there from Jacob Cardenas uh, another shame spark special right there I, I felt the ground shake a little it, bit yeah, on that one. Yeah, legitimately. <laughs> um, how much of an emphasis is there? I mean, you know, there's there's a little bit of excitement for anybody when you're uh, in your first home duel for a, a squad. But, I mean, do you think he's a little bit more pumped up uh, knowing he can come out here and put on a show for, for the crowd? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, the as a, as a grad transfer, it's always cool to be able to, to, I think you, you get both crowds, right? You get the crowd from where you came from in Cornell. I think that they still love Jacob as, as that guy, but you get a new, you get to kind of get the maize and blue. You get to put on the maize and blue and get, and get that cheering section and fan section also on your side. So it's kind of a win-win. And just I, I'm, a big, I'm a big believer in, you know, changing your environment every once in a while to keep things fresh. Um, I think it's a really important, important part of development. And for him, actually, it was a unique situation where <laughs> he, um, you know, at Cornell, y there's no um, ability to wrestle as a graduate. So he was forced out of there regardless. But, you know, I think that he was really excited to come to Michigan and meshed in with the guys really well as soon as he got in on campus. Ooh, and what a nice, nice misdirection. Nice misdirection. Well, we talked a little bit about the, the – athleticism that he brings with that size. You don't see a whole lot of misdirection low singles at 197. He's, he's looking for that tech fall here. One more point is all he needs. If I was a betting man, I'd, I'd think that there's a good chance he gets it. What do you think? <laughs> I think he's going to go back to that tilt. Nope, he's going to go on his feet. But he does yeah, just a completely dominant performance so far by Cardenas. Um, you know, and, and rightfully so in his, in his bi big t or, uh, Michigan debut here, um, you know, it seems like he's excited to be wrestling for the Wolverines, uh, just by the way that the tenacity and the, the kind of aggression that he's came out with. It's, uh, it's easy to win over the fans when you, you go out there and you put 14 points up. Well, I had a, a chance to interview him over the summer and, and that's what he talked about is, is scoring points. He likes to score points. He likes to be aggressive and, uh. You know, evidently he meant team points as well because he's still one point away from that tech fall. Yeah, I'd be interested to see. You said he'd go to the tilt. Um, if he wants to, to end this match on on the mat, which it looks there like it he is. does. And there's there it is. And he's going to get the three near fall. to get a 17-0 to zero technical fall. Jacob Cardenas in his debut for the Wolverines. Not a bad debut. Not a bad debut at all. I always loved the term technical fall, too. <laughs> it wasn't a fall, but like technically it was, you know. Great job, and the Michigan Wolverines upcoming schedule they're going to ha head to the East Coast next weekend to wrestle Duke in Virginia um, in their out-of-conference duels, followed by our January start of the Big Ten schedule where we'll see Maryland, Northwestern, and Minnesota. And, Kevin, I think I, January is almost, to me, like the official start of wrestling season because we get to see Big Ten wrestling. Yeah, that's that's when... Indeed it is. Up against Vince Mueller, it looks like. Uh, the sophomore from Woodbury, Minnesota for uh, Columbia. Great, and so, you know, another another Wolverine kind of getting getting a chance to debut is, is Jabril. And 
I think I think you know we're we're in for another great match here. Um, Michigan, I believe, has five heavyweights, um, maybe six now. As um, you know, if you've been following closely, we were, um, nice Ooh, shot that was there. A nice inside reach. You don't see too many outside step outside step uh, high crotches. <laughs> right. From heavyweights. But his last name is Krashidov, so you know the <laughs> some Eastern European influence there. Very impressive scramble here. As you see, wow, oh, Gabriel is locked. Oh, he's looking for that neutral danger. Great and take he down. finishes the scramble. Very impressive. Heavyweights in general have changed. This is not your, your father's heavyweights. And he's that looking for a Turk here. He is. He's got that, that lower leg caught. We might get some more swipes. Very impressive. You've got plenty of time here on the clock. As, as long as he's got that Turk, he's in a good spot. There he goes. Yeah, he's got to get his it. he's got to get his right arm across the across the face right there, yep. which he now does. And he's but oh, now he lost the, the leg. The Turk. So you kind of change one for the other there. You need it both. <laughs> but yeah, I I totally agree with what you're saying. That the heavyweights they're kind of built different these days. Yeah, I mean you you. Back in the day, it used to be a lot of 260, 270-pound guys just kind of pushing into each other for seven minutes. And now you see a lot more you know, dynamic attacks, a lot more shots. Um, and the last several heavyweight national champions have been very, very athletic, very mobile, a lot of good scrambles. And here we go. We've got Jab uh, Jabril throwing the leg in. And he's back to that Turk position. Yep. Now he has a leg. He, he, he had an actual Turk, but he's got a leg in. He seems pretty comfortable here. He's well, you don't want to get too comfortable. Right. He's a little high. Yeah, he's, got, he's got his locked around his own ankle, but that's, the, that's what you want to do. If, if you're getting high, you need to make sure you can break his hips flat, which Jabril does a nice job of there. But... But Mueller's doing a great job of, of fighting on bottom, right? As, and when a leg comes in, you want to make sure that you, movement is key for you, right? If, if you can clear that leg and get to a hip or get to a sit, you give yourself a good chance of getting out. Jabril doing an excellent job here. Of, I mean, really quietly racking up over two minutes of riding yeah, wow. time in that period. I think we were so focused on him, him scoring back points that we didn't realize <laughs> <laughs> that the riding time was racking up. Yeah, I'm surprised to see that he didn't get any back points out of that, that exchange. I thought my, maybe I think we got some swipes. single swipes, but. Yeah. Mueller very much still in this match. Starts yeah. on top in the third here, or excuse me, in the uh, second. Another Great nice return. Mat return. And if, yeah, if you're Kershidov here, you want to get up and, and make sure you can hold on to that riding time, right? Two minutes is a lot of riding time. But it can it can get it can get eliminated pretty quick if you you find yourself getting lazy on bottom. So well, just keep moving. And a cradle locked up. Oh my goodness! But oh. watch the knee. Oh, there we go. Nice job by by Kishidov. Yeah, I give Mueller credit there, going for the cradle. But I, I don't think he had it totally locked up, and Kishidov slipped out of it. It was <laughs> that's a little bit of what you're talking about with the heavyweights being built different there. You know that might have been a death sentence for a lot of heavyweights, but really kind of just went Gumby mode there yeah. with his body. Yeah, a lot of uh, agility is not always what heavyweights used to be known for. Very agile move there by Kershidov to get out of that uh, that cradle. And the riding time racking up again. And and if you're you're Kershidov here, I think you're you're okay with riding knowing that you can secure riding time, you know, if you ride out this period and that's just basically another point, right? Well, he's doing a good job staying out to the side. You know, he's not going to get called for stalling with the way he's riding here. Staying out to the side, looking to improve his position. Pulling arms in, throwing legs in. All the activity that you need to show that you're working to, to improve. Yeah, he's doing a really good job of adjusting. He's got that cross wrist, and he's, he's just kind of using 
you know, Mueller's movements um, to to kind of just see where he wants to be at. If he wants to be out to the side or kind of driving driving knee in behind. And he's just kind of mirroring his motion really well. And he's going to secure riding time here before we go into the third period. So riding time secure. So Krushidov technically winning 6-0 right now. Are you looking for a major here, Kevin? I, I think that has to be the the mentality here. You know, I think if you're, you're Krushidov, you know, we talked a little bit about some of the weights that were in flux. Um, and I know there's a plan here for Michigan with with Heinzelman coming in uh, as a transfer in next semester. But still, you want to you want to leave an impact uh, in the coaches' minds as far as what you're able to do and, and your level of competition. So I think if you're Krushidov, yeah, you're you're looking to get that that major and show them what you can do and give them the chance. Yeah, he, he's doing a great job here. And, and I did want to mention that I think that you know Michigan was really excited about about being able to bring in Josh Heinzelman from Oklahoma. Um, he, he was round of 12, you know, a, a, at the NCAA tournament and somebody that can make an immediate impact coming in. So look at this. He's, he did a good job getting the corner. Oh, and oh, that was close. Yeah, he, he basically had that takedown, but, you know, Mueller does a really good job of just not giving up the position, continuing to wrestle through. And exactly so, right. I, I almost think that if you're, you're Jabril there, you kind of figured you're just waiting for the ref to throw the three up. And Mueller did not let that happen. He kept wrestling through the position and ended up on top. Yeah, if you're Mueller here, though, you you get you got to realize that you're still losing by three. So, you know, stall calls aren't going to do it. You 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 got to look for a turn or either think about kicking him and getting back up to your feet. Um, but you don't want to be here, that's for sure. Especially as the time's ticking down. Well, the way he was locked up that cradle earlier, it's almost like that's kind of what he's looking for. But Yep, and he gets hit for stalling because, well, I, yep, I believe Mueller gets hit for stalling there because you're riding the hips, right? There's a big emphasis on, um, you know, looking for a turn this year. And so if you're just sitting there with a leg in riding the hips, you know, staying, you know, neutral, then, oh. It's tough to get hit for stalling, though, when you're winning. Or yeah. when you're losing, I should say. Yeah, you especially in the top position. Right. You know? And Jabril Krishidov is going to do it. Final score, 6-3 to three to end our dual meet. Michigan going to be the winners, 28-9. to nine. Big, I mean, big win. You, you kind of expected this sort of lopsided victory for Michigan you know, coming into this duel. But credit to Columbia. They, they still got that upset win at uh, 184. Um, had some good good wins at 49 and, and 57 as well. So uh, very fun duel and, and certainly exciting stuff here. I believe we're going to get a, uh, a sideline interview, it sounds like, with uh, Dylan Raguson coming up. Yeah, it does. Final score, 28 to 9.